it is unbelievable the the juice the vibe of a locker room that comes back into you through you from being back in it even though it was different this year with COVID I thought this year was some of the most fun times I've had in the locker room we were in a former wide receivers room like right down the hall from the locker room they spread us out so like all the vets and the older guys were in our main locker room every other locker so they had half a locker room so they put us all around and then moved the meeting rooms upstairs so so we were there were six of us in this little old receivers room go ahead I was going to say, were you guys, because I know what they did in Green Bay was they actually had guys meeting virtually. So instead of all the position players being in the room together, there would be like a running back in the lounge. There'd be a running back in the training room and there'd be a running back in like some other little room. So I don't know if you guys are the same thing, but like that's COVID. Like that's, that never happens. That, that never happens ever. No. So they gave you the option. And okay. the nice thing was we were in our stadium. Our meetings happened in our stadium. So we were able to use so many different rooms. Like I had my own personal suite with my name on it, you know, like a little piece of paper over the whatever suite number. And you go there and you had to eat, like when we were in like different protocols, like some of it was like normal protocol, like no one with COVID in the building. But once someone got COVID, you go to like in lockdown and you had to eat all meals in, in your room. You had to eat all, yeah, you had to eat all your meals in your personal suite, which is like up on the fourth floor. Meetings yeah. were on the third floor. And then luckily we're still able to meet as a tight end unit. Cause I don't know if I've been able to done virtual all the way through. Um, I mean, it was okay, but it, it's really tough to like meet virtually and do what we do and not have sure. actual like conversation. And like yeah. the coach is like glitching in and out and like, yeah. you, they can't hear what you're saying. And the coach was frustrated. You're frustrated. And then all of a sudden you're like, wow, that was just like 30 minutes of the meeting went by and we just literally didn't get anything done. Now I shouldn't say that we always got stuff done, but it just felt like in person, <clears throat> obviously, you could get so much more done than you're yeah, used to. For sure. So. And I guess, so how was it like, did guys, were guys nervous about the virus in, in Carolina? Did you guys ever have an outbreak? And then also like, because you know how the locker normally is, you know, after practice, you'll have guys BSing, you'll have guys all in the tub. Like after practice is fun. That's like when you get to hang out and like talk to guys. How was it in, in the locker room in Carolina? Was it similar or was it way different? Were guys like, you know, taking everything seriously? Well, I would say this. We had a couple different protocols based off how many times we had people in the building had it. I don't know yeah. if we had a pure outbreak. I'm sure our operations people could tell you differently, but I, I don't think we had a pure outbreak, but we had some instances where like some staff members had it or maybe one player had it and a group of staff members had it or the close contact thing is what just wiped out room. So coach rule likes to have like ping pong tables and basketball hoops and stuff in the locker room and stuff for people to do to like get closer and get together. The more, you know, your teammate, sure. the better you're going to be as a team. It's pretty simple. Um, and he's always believing that he did it at temple. I know he did it at Baylor and he's doing it in Carolina and it's work. We were a really close team last year as much as you could be with COVID. Yeah. So yeah, guys wanted to BS and have a good time when they got in from practice, myself included in the tubs, do all that. But yeah. you know, you had to have a mask on and then like everyone, like the people that would like enforce the mask stuff, like they got their stuff going on and figure out their practice. So yeah. it was a group effort. And I think we bought in on it and I don't think any player, or maybe a couple players missed some games here and there, but it wasn't catastrophic. It wasn't like Denver where that receiver was playing quarterback. That was crazy. That was wild. And it was different this year, right? For you guys, what did you see around the league, like punters and kickers and snappers wise? Because bigger practice squad. And also like if a punter gets sick or a kicker gets sick the day before the game or they get contact traced, meaning they were within six feet of somebody yeah. and that person gets COVID, they're wiped out. Yeah. What was the difference this year in, in the NFL? So that's one of the reasons why I was signed to the practice squad in the first place was because – Green Bay already locked up a playoff spot. So a couple, I guess like a week or two before that, there was an incident in I think Jacksonville where they basically had one of the specialists test positive or, or maybe it was a false positive or something like that. So all three of them basically had to quarantine or had to retest. And there was, this was two days before the game. And I think there was questions like, okay, we might have no specialists for the game, which is not good. Like that's, that, that's definitely, yeah, that, that's devastating. That's something you don't want to have happen. 
So I guess what kind of happened after that, it ended up being a false positive. And I think they luckily were able to sign a guy off the street to take it, to fill in for the punter, I think, who actually was the one who had it. But I guess what teams saw because of that situation, they basically need to have an insurance policy backup specialist on the practice squad to make sure that if something happens to like the specialist, and normally they're going to be contact tracing, they're going to be close together, just that's the nature of our position. They need to have somebody on the practice squad to potentially elevate if that happens. So I think that's why I was even signed to the practice squad in the first place as basically an insurance policy in case something happened, especially during the playoff run. They would already have somebody in the system who kind of knows what's going on, who they've seen and they trust uh, to be able to fill in, you know, if that were to arise. So um, definitely, a, uh, you know, a wacky year in terms of, you know, specialists and special teams.